Hi, my name is Christiana. Hello. Hi, my name is Diana. <laughs> It's okay, don't worry about it. Hi, my name is Solomon. Hi, my name is Esther. Hi, my name is Crystal. Help me. Help me. You want to repeat it again? No. Okay, good. No. All right. So today we are going to learn all about magnets. So here with us we have a type of magnet called a bar magnet. It, so it can... opens just like that. Yeah, yeah. It's just simple packaging. So what do, you, uh, what do you notice about the magnet? It's heavy. It's mm -hmm. heavy. So it's metal. metal. Yeah. It has north and south. It has north and south, it yes. It has different colors. Different colors. What are the colors? Red, Red and blue. Red and blue. Yeah. All right. So most magnets typically don't have these colors. So the bar magnets are designed like this is like for studying and education. So it shows you where the north and the south is. I don't see east. There's no east, uh, but we shall find we shall find where east is later in the experiment. Oh. Oh. All right. When do you think magnets were discovered? I have an idea. 1985. 1985 is just 30 years ago. Less 18 about what? 1985. It was actually discovered much, much, much earlier. 600 AD. Something around those times, like yeah. in the times of the Greeks and all those people, like Greek. Aristotle. Yeah. Below like, 1865. Way below 1860. I've forgotten the actual date, but it's around that time. And do you know how they were discovered? Mm. Using so, stones. Using yeah. stones, yes. So they were a type of stones that were called lord stones. Um, and those type of stones basically have a natural magnetism, meaning that they are naturally found. Like when you find it, it's magnetic. Try and put okay, you, the two of you. Try and put your north and north together. North and north. North and north, the blue sides. Just try and push them together and see what happens. Like very, very, very gently. And then release them. Do you see what happens? Go away. Go, go. And then if and then if you do the other side, if you put north and and south. Just hold it. Ah, so they're attracted to each other. So that's that's the biggest property of magnets. Basically, the ability to attract so certain types of materials. Don't like each other. Yes, oh. and that is called repulsion, meaning that they repel each other. And the other one is called attraction. Even south and south. Yeah, south and south. Basically, as long as look, see, look at it. Yeah, so these are called poles, poles of the magnet. So ah. similar poles will at, will repel each other or push each other away, and then. Different so poles will attract north, each other. Not like each other not the same. Yes, north and north, see, south and see, south. See, it's like a movie. Yeah. <laughs> so if you actually, try, try. <laughs> if you actually do something like, no. you see that, huh? I mean, if you put it by force, it's it is. It's only your. It's only your force that your hands that are holding it. But once you release, <laughs> once you release. That's what happened. So there's something called a magnetic field, which basically surrounds the magnet. If you realize that when you put it here, the force is not very strong, right? Yeah. But when you put it on the ends, it's much, much stronger. Mm -hmm. So we are going to talk about the magnetic fields. But first, we are going to talk about how magnets are arranged, all right? So inside metal, um, uh, there's a very complex scientific term called ferromagnetism. So there are two words here. The first is ferro, which basically means iron. And then magnetism is magnetism. So in many, magnetic ma in many ferromagnetic materials, basically mag uh, materials that have the capacity to become magnets, it, you find that inside the piece of metal, there are things called domains, right? So these magnetic domains are like small micro magnets that have like a north, a south, a north, a south, 
but they're very, very random. So you can find north and south and in different directions. So you find that these tiny magnets are scattered all over the place. They are not really facing in the same uniform direction. So you find a north and south, south, north, ETC, right? So what then happens is that there is no net direction for north and south. So you find that it's because it doesn't have a net direction, the entire, mag the entire material is either really, really weak magnet or it does not exhibit any magnetic properties at all. However, for the ones that end up becoming like magnets, you actually find that the domains face the same direction. And as always, south is attracted to north, south is attracted to north. So what ends up happening is that all of these are facing the same general direction. So all the southers are facing this side and all the north is facing this side. And then what that ends up being is that you have one big south pole and one big north pole creating a giant magnet that has south and north. Let's first use this and see which items are magnetic and which are not. These are... Metal. These are pieces of metal, yes. But not every metal is magnetic, mm. all right? Not every metal is ferromagnetic, meaning that it has magnetic properties. So this is a... So pick an item from here and use the magnet to see which one is magnetic and which one is not. Okay. So put the ones which are magnetic here, the ones which are not magnetic here. And those 50 shilling coins, who can see if they're magnetic? It's magnetic, this one. The 50 shillings, huh? Where did you get this one? <laughs> that is actually Ugandan money. Because people don't people don't like it. Because it doesn't have a lot of value. People don't like carrying around 50 shilling coins. Because there's nothing you can buy for 50 shillings. So this shows you that some metals are magnetic, others are not. So just because it's a piece of metal doesn't mean that it's automatically a magnetic material. Right? So the magnetic materials are called ferromagnetic, the non-magnetic are called non-ferromagnetic. So the other thing that I want us to look at is what exactly is that force, right? That's around here. Now what happens is that there are lines that travel from one end to the another. You can't see them with your eyes. They travel from north to south. And these are so called... I can't see them. Do you remember that powder that I was showing you? Mm -hmm. It's going to help us see those lines. So these lines are called the magnetic field. You don't see it yet, but I'm drawing them for you right now. And you'll see them. So they look like this. And this field determines how powerful the direction of the magnet is. So because you have a high concentration of fields here, this side will be stronger. Remember how we said that the middle is very weak? All right? But when you go to the ends, it's very strong, right? Because the fields here are very few. But when you look here, there are a lot, all right? So now we are going to do an experiment for all of us mm -hmm. to see the fields. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Excited? Mm -hmm. Cool. So we are using these masks because this powder is very... Dangerous. If you inhale it, yes. So this is iron. This is actually... Oh, this is metal powder. You can't smell it. It has no smell. Oh, yay. So this How is metal you know? powder. How do you know? Because I've smelled it. So this powder is actually magnetic. You see that? See how cool that is? Make sure it doesn't come out of the plate. Yeah, it will just go all over the place and then collecting it is hard. <laughs> Can you put the magnet here? Yeah, just align it. Um, 
So this, you have to get it and just sort of spread it very slowly. Is that, is that go all over the place? Yeah. Can sure, you guys can do it if you want. Yes. But be very, very gently. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. It has to be around the magnet. Actually, if you put it elsewhere, you'll see that there's a limit to where the magnet can reach. This is so hard. <laughs> Now I realize why this is iron. It's so hard. Yeah. I thought it would be softer. Yeah. Is this the kind of iron we have in our body? Yes, but not shaped like this because this what? is the ones that you have in your body is is, is like molecular. Okay. It's like it's iron. like tiny particles. Mm -hmm. So can you see the shape that's forming? Yes. Does it look similar to that? Yes. Yeah. Do you see that there are places where there is there is no magnetic field? Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Because this magnet is a weak magnet, so it has a limit to its range. So I want you all to draw what you're seeing, basing on that diagram. So, draw what you're seeing. Get a marker and draw what you're seeing. The blue side is where? It's this side. And the red is that Down. side. You can get, there are lots of markers, you can get a blue one if you want. They're both blue and red, so. That's how it's magnetic. The one? This is how it's magnetic, because whatever it comes to it, it connects to the, like this. Yeah. Like, Basically, it attracts, yeah, it attracts the metals, the pieces of metal. So whatever comes to it that is, that is magnetic, it comes to it. Yes. But it, yeah, so there is a limit. So if you put any of these things here, it won't be attracted, but if you put it close. I think I'm done, but I'm done on this. <laughs> it's okay. The part of learning is about making mistakes and learning from that. That's also science. That's also about science. That's about science, exactly. Yeah. You keep trying and trying until you get it right. Well, well, yeah. Exa yeah. Excellent, yeah. So as you can see, the iron filings have helped us demonstrate exactly how the magnetic field is structured around the magnet. And as you can see, the further you go away from the, from the magnet itself, the field weakens. And you can see really strong activity here because the iron filings are very are much closer together. They are following the trend. The, they're following the lines very, very clearly. Um, but as you go further around, you see that there's very little action. So this has been a demonstration of how the magnetic field is structured around the magnet. The next video, we shall be talking about the different types of magnets. And one of the things we'll be doing is creating an electromagnet. And the thing about electromagnets is that you can actually create a magnet with a piece of metal and the wire. And then if you run a current through it, that piece of metal can become a magnet. So looking forward to the next video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the Foodie Bots channel. Bye. Bye.